Welcome to the digitallifestyle.com video show and this is the first uh, video show from the digitallifestyle.com and what I thought I'd show off today is Windows Home Server so this is a Windows Vista client machine connected to uh, Windows Home Server and I've got another device another couple of devices actually connected by uh, the network so when you first get onto your uh, Vista PC you'll notice you've got an extra icon down here which is the Windows Home Server and uh, this is showing that network health is at risk if we right click on the icon in the taskbar we can see we can go to the console we can do a backup which I'll have a look at in a moment and we can have a look at shared folders so first I'm going to look at the Windows Home Server console it asks for a password which um, I'll enter now and click connect. So there is really no need to go on the Windows Home Server at all. You can use it in a headless mode without a keyboard or mouse or display. Uh, for the purpose of this today, you're going to have a look via robot desktop at the home server. But this is actually the uh, only the application you need, the console. So here you can see uh, a number of machines on the network. We've got uh, the Alonso machine is actually the machine we're on now. Uh, we've got a laptop uh, that's connected, powered up, and uh, and connected up, and a tablet and another Vista machine. So let's first look at some backup options. So we're going to look at this machine we're on now, the uh, Alonso, which is the Vista machine that we're on now. I can here have a look at view backups, and you'll see there's um, some incomplete incomplete manual backups and some automatic ones the options for the backups are really simple once you've installed the home server client it automatically backs up at um, I think it's 1 a.m. or you can set the time anyway and you can see it actually manages the backups of those completely so most of the time uh, complete backup has been done and that's this is a pretty big uh, backup for this machine because it's got a lot of recorded TV content on there but so there's all my backups now and we'll have a look at how we can get into those uh, backups in the moment. If we have a look at the configuring the backup, you can tell it to exclude certain folders uh, from the backup. For example, you don't really want to back up the temporary internet files, you don't need to back up a temp directory. It may be that you choose not to back up uh, RIP DVDs folder, things like that. Uh, so this is the wizard you can use to actually set the backup details. By default, um, it does actually exclude some folders, like, like I said, the temporary internet folders and some of the, the obvious ones. Here you can see uh, there's a few hard disks on this machine. I've got it to back up the C drive and the Z drive. And I can pick some folders uh, which I'd like to exclude. And that's it. The backup uh, was is it running on there from this console now I can just do backup now on any of the machines I don't have to go onto the one that's running the backup so I could go onto this laptop do uh, backup now and that would kick a backup off uh, running over wireless running over LAN it doesn't matter it, it, it all works now you might notice up here we've got uh, health at risk well, the network health is at risk if I look into that you can see why and uh, that's because I've uh, tablet PC has not been backed up since the 24th of February so uh, that's showing really that the, the warning that the backup is not running so it does monitor everything it also shows up on there if any of the machines antivirus is, is out of date if firewalls switched off and those kind of security alerts so you can use this really to make sure that everything is running correctly on your local network another area that Windows Home Server helps is within synchronizing passwords so it's not like an active directory domain where you have one central store of passwords but if I logged on to here with my user account say the Ian Dixon account and then go to another device on the network with the Ian Dixon account and that's got the same account name but with a different password it'll say to you that the this password that you're using uh, is out of date or is not synchronized with the with the network do you want to use your existing password or do you want to use the one stored on Windows Home Server and then allows you to synchronize the passwords that way 
shared folders is an area that's really interesting on Windows Home Server. This uh, each person has uh, shared folders, and there are public shared folders. So you see, there's uh, folders for music, photos, software, and there's actually a custom one that I created there for uh, recorded TV. And then then there's the user ones. You'll notice that the duplicate folder duplication is disabled on all the folders apart from Kim's account. Um, that duplication means that the uh, content is spread across multiple hard disks. So if your home server's got two hard disks in, and uh, one of the hard disks goes, then the uh, fol contents of the Kim folder will be duplicated in both. So you've got that resilience in there. Um, so you, in this case, I've set this um, on that one folder, but you would probably set that, say, for your photos folder or specific folders. What you probably wouldn't set it on is, say, uh, software. Right? You know that you've got on on a CD and it's just on the server for convenience. So you've got the choice of doing it either way. You'll also notice it's got a nice uh, UI of space utilization over time, and you can see from this example, uh, it started off fairly low and it's ramped up over a period of time and then leveled off. And that's as uh, I introduce machines onto the network and then uh, as it sort of settled down over the, over the last f uh, few days on the server storage tab you can see that I've got two drives installed in machines and we've got a nice visual representation of, of what's being used so you can see the majority of this disk is actually used, being used for backups because that's what I kind of got into first with the home server you can have a look down here at the settings and you can see some of the settings so I've got the general, I've got the option to shut down I've got automatic updates on I've got the backup time so I've the window really is between 12 a.m. and 7 a.m. I've got the account management and backup cleanup and it uh, automatically deletes uh, all backups which you can set over in the backup options which when we looked at the uh, backups you could see which ones you wanted to uh, get rid of. There's a generic account for the home server and there's some uh, folder sharing options and the media sharing ones here are actually Windows Media Connect so you can, from an Xbox 360 or from uh, something like a Roku sound bridge you can connect into this and you can share music share your music photos and videos one thing it doesn't do which um, obviously media center enthusiasts are going to want is for it to do sort of your media center user interface with an extender so you still need a media center PC to be able to do that extender live TV type sharing um, it's a shame that feature is not in there but uh, it's been something that we've talked about with the with the home server team Okay, that's it for part one looking at Windows Home Server. In part two we're going to look at uh, actually diving into the into the backups and having a look at how we restore a single file from the backups. Uh, we're going to have a look at a little bit how the backup works and perhaps uh, one of the nicest features is the remote interface, how I can use it from uh, through the through the web I can get onto my machine, remote desktop onto any of the machines on the network, remote desktop onto the server and have a web-based UI to download files so uh, it's pretty pretty interesting really to see how you can transfer files over the web so we'll have a look at that in part two thanks for watching part one I'll see you on the digitallifestyle.com